Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. Continuing on from the last episode where we looked at the bubble sort algorithm and I hope you guys had a chance to play with it. We're going to look at ways of optimizing or improving the efficiency, making it faster essentially, making the computer have to do less operations. So if there's any way when we write an algorithm that we can think of little tweaks, little hacks in the positive sense of the term, that we can make the program run faster. Because we saw, even with the bubble sort when we stepped through it, that sometimes you're doing a lot of checks for swaps that just don't aren't necessary because all the, all the values are in order. So we've seen the algorithm, you guys have played with it, you've thought about it a great deal. What we will say is, and we'll re remind ourselves of this, that each pass of the sorting process, the top value is put in the correct place. So first time around, the top value is in the correct place. The second time around, the, the first, last two are in place. Third time around, the last three. Fourth time around, the top four. Fifth time around, top five, and so on. If we recognize that, then we shouldn't need in the inner loop, in the inner pass, to go from the start to the, begin, from the, start to the end of the array each time. What we should do is the first time go from the start to the end, next time go from the start to the end minus one, next time go to the start to the end minus two, end minus three, end minus four. Because there's no point going, if we've done four passes already, the last four values are already in order. So there's no point going from zero to end minus one. We should just go from zero to end minus four or minus five, because there's no point checking if the last four need to be sorted because we already know they're sorted. So if in some way we could change the inner loop instead of going from 0 to n minus 1, if we could reduce it to first n minus 1, then n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, that would save us a load of unnecessary comparisons. So here's how we do it. We add in a, a, a new variable called reducing index. And reducing index starts at n minus 1. And the inner loop now doesn't go from 0 to n minus 1, it goes from 0 to reducing index, okay? Which is n minus 1 in the first instance. Then when it's finished the inner for loop, we take 1 away from reducing index, so now it's n minus 2. So then when we, the next pass, we go from 0 to n minus 2, the next pass 0 to n minus 3, the next pass 0 to n minus 4, the next pass 0 to n minus 5. So that whole green triangle we saw there, we don't need to do the comparisons on that because that's already taken care of. So simply by adding in this extra variable, we've actually halved the amount of time that the process takes. So if there's eight values, we would do that eight by eight times, 64 times, but now we only have to do it 32 times because we're reducing the amount of times that the inner loop occurs by taking that number down each time because we know the values after that are sorted. Another way we can think of, of reducing the process is, let's say we were fed in an array that's already sorted. We actually wouldn't want to do it any times. So if we pass through the values and we don't do any swaps at all from 0 to 10 minus 1, if we don't do any swaps the first time, then we should just exit the program straight away. Or after the third pass, if we just don't do any swaps, we should have a halt immediately and say, look, I didn't do any swaps. That means the whole thing is in order. Because the only time I won't do any swaps from start to finish is if it's all perfectly in order. So how we can do this is using our Boolean friend. So we know we've got a variable type called Boolean, and a Boolean can either be just true or false. So we're going to create a variable of type Boolean, and we're going to say we did a swap, and we'll assume, we'll set that to false at the start. So that's in green there, did swap is false. We'll do our code exactly as we did, but now when we do a swap inside the if statement, we're going to set that boolean to be true if we actually did a swap. So what does that mean? What that means is if at any point we don't do a swap, if, the, if that never gets set to true, if that's false, then we know it's grand. We've finished the program. There's no need to go any further. It's, it's done. So. If did swap is set to true, that means swaps did occur, which is great. That means we're still, the, the array is not sorted. But if did swap is not set to true, that means it never went into that if statement. So that means there was never a time where the, the second value was smaller than the first value. So if that boolean isn't set to be true, 
then we know we should just exit so we can see the bit of green at the bottom where we say if did swap is false then don't worry about it just exit the program so as I said if I got past an array that was already sorted I would never go into the if statement because it would never have the second value lower than the first if it never goes into the if statement then did swap will never set to be set to be true. If did swap is never set to be true, that means when we go down to the bottom bit and say if did swap equals false, if no swaps occurred, that's that's what did swap will be. It'll be false because it never went into set it to be true. Therefore, we just exit the program and we say then exit. So that's that will optimize our program, particularly if we passed in an array that is already sorted. One more thing, and this is not necessarily an optimization as much as being helpful to the programmer. We, we talked already about the idea of modularization, that is, taking a bit of code and wrapping a name around it so that we don't have to, we don't have to read thousands of lines of code. We can just section off little bits of code into a, a module or a method or something like that. So the swap function to me seems perfect for that. So if we create a module called swap and it takes in values A and B, and it swaps A with B using the temp value that we talked about before, and then we return back the swap values A and B. We could reduce the look of our code then by changing, we see in the if statement there where it says if then do all that crack, let's change that now to just swap. So we can call a function called swap, passing in, uh, in index and index plus one, and if index plus one is smaller than index, it'll do the swap for us. So that's three things to consider. Adding in a reducing index, putting in a boolean to check if we did a swap, and then um, creating a module for swapping. And that's some of, there's hundreds of ways we can optimize bubble sort, but that's a few ways that we can do it. So we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.